Hey, so I want to share how to create a procedural map generator in Blender 4.2 using geometry nodes. This is a more advanced tutorial, but on a beginner level, you still should get the point and gain some knowledge you can use in your projects. Okay, so the idea is really simple. We will start by adding the base ground block at the bottom. On top of that, we will add multiple terrain layers, and we will manipulate the shape of each layer by using noise texture. After that, we will get the top faces selected, insert them slightly, and instance stuff like trees, rocks, grass. Okay, so that's the whole idea. Let's get straight to the tutorial. First, let's make a single layer of terrain. We will use a plane, subdivide it a few times to get more geometry to work with, delete some faces using noise texture, and compare nodes to give it the right shape and extrude the mesh. Let's add a seed value to the noise texture. We will get different terrain shapes with that. The compare node will control how many faces will get deleted. As you can see, it works perfectly. The delete factor sets the face amount, and the seed changes the shape. Now let's group them to keep it organized. Plug the seed integer into the input, name it correctly, so you know what's going on later. Also, plug the value for the compare node. I will name it delete factor, and change the subtype to factor. Let me quickly rename the node and change the color to make it more visible as this is a custom node. Now, we need to solidify the plane. We need a few nodes. Extrude mesh, combine XYZ, optionally the value node, join geometry, merge by distance, and flip faces nodes. Set the extrude mesh to faces and uncheck individual property. Plug the combine XYZ and change the Z value to add some height to the mesh. The extrude node deletes the original geometry, so we need to bring it back and connect it to the new one. It will have flipped normals, so we need to flip them again. That's why we are using flip faces node. In the end, merge everything by distance. Let's make a group for this also. Now we need to stack the terrain layers. We will use a repeat zone node to do it iteratively. The higher the terrain, the more geometry should get deleted. That's why I added this delete factor slider. With each iteration, the factor will change to get the proper result. Okay, so I will create a custom geometry output. It will contain the merged layers, as we do not want to overwrite the original geometry. Also, add the integer input. I will call it iterations. This will tell the repeat zone the current iteration number. We will use it in a second. So we set the position of each layer. We will multiply the iteration number by the height value. In my case, it's 0 0.1. Let's make a group for this also. Now, let's bring back our custom nodes and put them between the geometry input and our new set position node group. As you can see, the terrain got some shape, but each layer looks the same. We need to use again the iteration number and use some math. This way we will get a different delete factor for each terrain layer. Okay, so that's basically all for now. Let's bevel the mesh, clean the geometry nodes to make it more organized and tweak some values. Now let's create a mask to get the top faces. We will use a grid and ray cast it on top of the train. After that, we will delete the faces that are not pointing up.
Now, we can distribute the points, merge some of them to avoid overlapping stuff, and then add the trees, rocks, and grass on them. We will use a custom attribute to specify on which point the tree should get instanced on where the rock and the same for the grass. So each point gets a random integer between one and three. I will call this attribute item ID. So for example, the point with the item I that equals one will spawn the tree, the point with two will spawn the rock, and the three will spawn the grass. For your setup, you can add as many different objects as you want this way. You get the point, so let's proceed with the nodes. Add an instance on points node and refer to our attribute. Use the compare node, set the type to integer, and set the operation to equal. Put the desired number in the bottom socket. Plug this into the selection input so the instance on points node knows which points should it use. Add a collection node. The objects will get randomly selected from this group and instanced on the points. Now let's group it to make everything prettier. To add more randomness to these objects, we will use a random value for scale and random vector for rotation. Okay, nice. We will have three collections, one for the trees, one for the rocks, and one for the grass. So let's duplicate this custom node two times. Change the item ID for each node. Now, we need to prepare the assets. It's pretty straightforward, but please remember that every tree should be a singular object. In other words, the trees cannot have any child objects, as they would be treated as separate objects this way. Now, let's tweak the scale and rotation. Just play with these values until you get the right result. I will plug the seed node into the input group so we can control the seed from the modifiers tab. Now we need to create the proper map generator geometry node setup. This part is not that advanced and most of it's on beginner geometry nodes level. So just follow what I'm doing. The basic idea is to create a grid delete some faces to get a random map shape using math, mix color nodes and some operations, then use the separate geometry node, use a noise texture as a selection and instance, the terrain on the selection output and instance the water on the inverted selection. Add random rotation on the Z axis like 90, 180 or 270 degrees. For the terrain blocks, use a random Z position to give it more variety.
Now here are the screenshots of my GeoNode setup. Feel free to pause and copy it. Hope you liked the tutorial. Let me know what should I do better as this is my first video. Feedback appreciated. Have a good day. Bye.